Hi everyone, here's the Bookemist once again. It's the time of the year for charts again. I still haven't thought about and filmed my top 10 books of 2016, mostly because I still have to finish and make up my mind about Thomas Pynchon's V. At the moment I'm loving it and I'm confused by it in equally rough, equally the same measures. Um, today I'm filming my top 10 records, top 10 albums of 2016, the albums I like the most from last year. But first, two things. Hello, if you've stumbled upon this video by chance, I usually talk about books on my channel, so don't imagine I know the first thing about music. And uh, also know that this uh, chart is not going to feature the big mainstream records of the year, like new records by uh, David Bowie, uh, Leonard Cohen, Metallica, uh, Kanye West. Chance the Rapper are all records I've listened to, but for whatever reason, I actually like them all, but for whatever reason I haven't listened to them extensively, I haven't formed any strong opinion on them and I'm not going to talk about them in this video. Uh, the bands featured in this video are by no means underground or obscure bands, but still, yeah, there, you're not going to find David Bowie in here, but I don't think you need me to tell you that David Bowie's Black Star is considered to be a very good record. Take this uh, whole top 10 with a pinch of salt and take it as a way of suggesting you some records I think are pretty good. Number two, I recently subscribed to Maven, which is an awesome website where creators can upload their YouTube videos and turn them into projects. As a website in general I think it's a bit wasted on me but it's a great opportunity for creative people and reviewers and people such as those to actually discuss the stuff they love they, to, uh, they love to talk about and to create very good discussions. If you check the description box you'll find a link to check this video on Maven 2 and in there you'll be able by clicking, clicking on an icon in the top left a corner of the video you'll be able to tell me which ones among these records I'm going to talk about you actually liked, which were your favorite records of the year. So here we go, number 10 and number 9 both go to two punk records which are very different punk records. Number 10 goes to Rosenstock's Worry, which is an excellent punk record that feels almost like a live in the way it is recorded and features that kind of direct uh, anxiousness and angst and uh, rage at the way things are going. It's a very personal record, but it's also a fuck you record to all the people who need to go fuck themselves and lots of people need to go fuck themselves in 2016. Uh, uh, number 9 goes to Tashea More, I have no idea how to pronounce the name of this band. The album is Stage 4, which is a post-hardcore kind of record. It reminded me a lot about an awesome record, which is Comadres a self-titled record from, I think, 2013. Check that one out too. Stage 4 features that kind of ordered, uh, in-your-face rage and attitude, but also has more introverted tracks. It's, an, it's the kind of record that makes you love post-hardcore for its uh, capacity to be both terribly energetic and terribly personal. Number 8 goes to Holy Ghost by uh, Modern Baseball, which is a record I listened to after reading a review and thinking I won't, I wouldn't like it, but actually I like it a lot. I expected kind of a very self-absorbed and angsty record, and this is in a way, but it's also extremely catchy and it's filled with very short, very catchy songs. It's a short record in general and it's a great experience. Uh, as an emo record, it is kind of emo and angsty, but as I said, it it doesn't it doesn't reach that point in which it becomes annoying. I think I actually like it I liked it more than uh, Car uh, Tins of Denial by Car Seat Headrest, which is in a way the more mature, more um, uh, well-formed version of this same record, and which of course lots of people uh, adored and put in their top 10s and top 50s and shit. But, as, I mean, as this chart is going to reveal you, I'm not a very mature music listener. Number seven is PJ Harvey with Op6 Demolition Proce Project, not Process. A great record, which uh, was probably a bit overshadowed by its predecessor. I was hoping it was going to be as good and, um, like, sonically close to Let England Shake, which is one of the best records of the decade, if you ask me, and if you ask lots of people. And in a way, it is very close in its sound to that record, and it is as catchy, but only in a certain tracks, like the opener of Op6 Demolition Project is astoundingly catchy and melodic and wonderful. Some other tracks are a bit more 
um, daring. I think in general it took more shit than it deserved because I think it's a great record. It is kind of pretentious because it is heavily politicized, but Let England Shake was too, and lots of records this year were very politicized and pretentious, and I think they had reasons to be, let's face it. Um, number six is another women singer, which is Quero Quero Bonito, with Bonito Generation, completely different kind of record, very short, very energetic, kind of electro, kind of J-pop sort of record, about college life today and about how college prepares you to nothing and you know uh, just makes you over prepared for the world in the wrong way. <laughs> it's a super cute super dancey record that is a shot of adrenaline when you need a little bit of happiness. It has as I said a bitter side but it never overshadows the happiness of the whole atmosphere. It's very bouncy as an electronic record. It's a safe bet if you're looking for some musical happiness. Number five is Dive's self for more record is the is are whatever that means uh, i am actually i was since the beginning of their career a huge dive fan i saw them live live when they had just released ocean which is still one of my favorite dream pop records one of my favorite records in general from this decade at least uh, is the is are is the overblown version of ocean ocean was quite short i think it was 40 minutes this this record goes on and on and on lots of people disliked it because they found the lyrics too personal but i felt like in a record such as these in a dream pop record such as these the lyrics kind of shift uh, slid to the background of the experience because it was more again as in ocean a kind of dreamy experience and I loved it more because of its atmosphere than because of its content. I do believe it is near, not nearly as consistently good as Ocean, and if at first I loved it a lot, I later turned a little bit disappointed by the quality, general quality of the thing, but I still think it's kind of a great dream pop record, I got a text. Um, do listen to it if you like the genre and if you, of course if you liked their first record. Number four is The Ninth Hour by Sonata Artica, mm, Finnish melodic power metal. Uh, Sonata Artica are actually one of my favorite bands of all times. They are kind of the band of my life because they were the first band I got in love with when I was kind of 14 and I know their discography by heart. I love them to bits. Ninth Hour is a more cohesive experience, a more uniform record and a much darker record than Sonata's previous two efforts and even the sillier and funnier tracks in here and Sonata always put at least one or two silly tracks in the records. Even those ones like Fairy Tale for instance are actually kind of depressing once you start listening to the lyrics and this is yet another album which is heavily politicized and some people will find that pretentious and off-putting sonatas especially in their la in, in these last few years they are not the subtlest of bands both sonically and lyrically but at the same time i don't think their environmentally conscious message hinders the music too much the one flow in this record i find is that there's a song in here called um white pearl black oceans part two and i don't think it stands up to part one at all uh white pearl black ocean is is uh, one of my favorite songs ever uh it uh when i was an adolescent it actually ignited a weird phallic obsession with lighthouses in me what can you do? Number three is Nonagon Infinity by uh, King uh, Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. That's a tongue twister, uh, which is a band I found out, I discovered this year, I listened to their whole discography and I still think Nonagon Infinity, their last record, might be their best. The quirkiness of the thing is that it is a perfectly circular record, you could listen to it in a loop eternally, like the very last note uh, is uh, naturally followed by the very first note of the record, and its greatest strength in my opinion, it's kind of psychedelic rock, rock but it has a very hard-hitting edge. The very good thing about it is that it works perfectly both as an atmospheric record when you need some background music and as a straight-up rock record when you need to get amped up for something. Michael Shabon's latest novel just came out. Bah! As for the first two positions, it was very hard for me to decide because I love these records, both of them equally. I believe they are both kind of masterpieces in a way. Uh, they have their own strengths and their own flows. 
let's uh, I, I simply chose to put that one record number one because it's the by far the record I listened to the most during 2016. First on number two is Aesop Rock's The Impossible Kid. By far my favorite rap record I listened to this year. The Impossible Kid is a very nocturnal record and it is a very cohesive and uniform experience. It feels like a journey you are taking together with Aesop Rocks and both lyrically with its references to maps and with some recurring themes and sonically through its beats, which as I said are kind of nocturnal, kind of, kind of dark, but never to the point in which they become too dark. They are always enjoyable, always amazing. Uh, it's a kind of an, an amazing experience and a journey of self-discovery deals with, a lot with heavy stuff such as depression, isolation, uh, self-doubt, all those kinds of things. But it also has some awesome funny moments. There's the track called uh, A Lot of Years in here which cracks me up every time about how Aesop starts feeling old compared to the younger generations. There's an amazing song in here about Aesop Rock's cat called Kirby, but of course the lyrics are what make this album great and I could literally spend one afternoon listening to a single song from this record over and over again and get and like analyzing and trying to get all the referencing and there are so many word games in here and if you like that kind of stuff this is definitely the record for you. Uh, Aesop Rocks is an amazing wordsmith. I recently discovered this stuff and I only his only other album I know is Skeleton and I can't wait to dig deeper into his discography. Finally, number one, my favorite record from 2016 was Lemon Demon's Spirit Phone, which is weird because in 2015 too I put first Ape Quest by Professor Elemental, which some people, just like Spirit Phone, might consider a comic or are a, like a humor humorous kind of record, but I don't think these records are humorous records at all. I actually consider them serious examples of the music, even though they are of, of, uh, amazingly ironic. And Spirit Phone in particular uses that same kind of humor as uh, like a band such as Sparks, the um, like cult band from the American 80s. And you wouldn't say that Sparks is kind of not a real band because of their humor, would you? Sonically too, Lemon Demons indie rock slash electronic music with hints of chip tune and video games music here and there has some re like some sonic references to the 80s which is a decade i love musically and again here too the lyrics are what m turns this record into a real jewel just as with the impossible kid and much more this is a very nerdy record all of these lyrics are uh, science fiction or fantasy or horror based and the record makes lots, they, they are often hilarious, but at the same time they use these genres and they use this context to, to convey all sorts of emotions. There's the, the track in here, which is definitely king of the record, is called Touchstone Telephone. It's a very catchy pop tune. And at, while it is hilarious and catchy, it also conveys this weird sense of anxiety, which makes it like completely awesome. And there are a few songs in here, most notably When He Died and Spiral of Ants, which despite the lyrics that some people might find absurd, they are actually completely touching and moving. And like When He Died was one of the most moving tracks from 2016, if you ask me, and although it's about basically the death of some kind of weird necromancer in his mansion, you have to listen to, the, to this record to understand what I'm talking about. It's a record I would suggest to anybody, it's completely catchy, it's one hell of a ride. Uh, the, but the middle of the record is gets a little bit sillier than the rest, with tracks such as Sweet Bud or Soft Fuzzy Man, and it's a bit weaker than the, like the, the rest of the whole album. Overall, still, I would say I loved it to bits. That's it, these were my favorite 10 records from 2016. I know it's a weird chart, it's a bit all over the place, but what can you do? Let me know what your favorite records from last year were, let me know if I completely missed uh, one or two records you think, you think I should definitely check out. Don't forget to check out this video on Maven 2 and to let me know again which were your favorite records from 2016. Thank you so much for watching once again, guys. I will see you in the next one. Have a great 2017. Bye, guys.